Zoom the recording. Uh, and I'm not mic. I'm not muted. I do that often, all day long, at least once a day. I'd say enter a meeting and I just start talking, and or someone calls on me and I'm not. I'm muted. So uh, welcome to this session. I really appreciate you all coming. Um, this is a. I know the the title of it is a, a poetic approach to um, Creative Commons education, and that's the. Um, intention is to practice, answer questions, and kind of meet you where you're at in in um, uh, your understanding of this stuff and, and apply it. I think of this as very uh, practical session, so I appreciate you all being on camera, although that's not a requirement um, in any sense. You can always just throw reactions with the, you know, I just did the visual thumbs up, but you can do a, a thumbs up or, or something to that effect. I don't mind it, but I'd love, this is going to be a very active session. Um, uh, because I think it's it's just more valuable that way. Um, so welcome to Creating Open Works. Uh, license, remixing, and hosting are the three kind of buckets that we'll talk about um, and talk through. So if you have questions or a very specific context that you want to talk through, um, please stop me at any time. Um, I don't mind at all. Uh, oh, I didn't add a slide of who I am. But um, my name is Nicholas Parez. I teach um, online courses in the education program, um, the uh, EDU 132 and 133 specifically. And then I've also been teaching um, the TESOL, the ESL Teachers License Program. I teach their um, intro, the study of English language, because I'm a bit of a, a language nerd. Um, so, though not so much written and, um, Kathleen back in the day taught me, helped, really helped me and guide me, guided me with my writing when I was a front range student. Um, so I really appreciate her in that regard and um, very excited to see her continue to do great work at front range. So a little shout out to Kathleen there. <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas. That was kind of you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see yeah, everyone. You too. Likewise. So this session um, is something that I've been doing. I'll be honest, I haven't done it since before uh, COVID, um, but not the first time I, I haven't done it online. I will ask you at one point to open up a Google Doc and also um, uh, I'll ask you to kind of go into some websites we're going to look at. I have a few examples for us to look around is one of the most important things when it comes to remixing or, um, is being able to identify uh, the license and our ability as end users of, of these, um, of someone else's uh, creative thought work. So. Um, be prepared to open a window. I'll share a Google Doc link with you further down the road. Um, the main objectives of these of this workshop is to explore some open repositories, examine some different Creative Commons licenses. Um, there are some nuances to Creative Commons licenses. Um, they, they can change depending on the author over time. Um, and then there's quite a few of them uh, within the Creative Commons uh, license spectrum. Um, and then create, we're going to create an open poem. I, I you know, I'm not a poet. Uh, I support poets um, at DU. I'm an instructional designer during the day um, at DU, and I do a lot of OER, and I, and I work with uh, the creative and poetry writing graduate program quite a bit. Um, though I say all that, I'm not a poet. Uh, I've never published a poem. Um, but the poems that have come out of this workshop are have been fantastic fantastically funny and creative so we'll, we'll stick with it and i appreciate you all coming um to do that with us and then we'll talk briefly about hosting platforms in general um and i'll do my best to check chat hi terry welcome um and and then we'll talk about hosting platforms just in general what does it mean to host to different um spaces uh uh, reposit an open repository like OpenStax or Merlot or um, one of those versus uh, YouTube or or things of that nature. So we'll we'll kind of speak uh, in general terms and give you a sense of where you might host these things. Though we do have wonderful repositories as part of the um, Colorado Community College, and I would push you to move use those and work with someone there first for kind of negotiating um, where you think it would be best to place your uh, openly licensed creative work and thought. So let's move into the first bit here. Finding open content. Um, today we're going to look at a few different platforms 
Um, and some of these vary by, uh, some of them are open. The open educational repositories are open just in that's what they're offering. So they expect you as a produce, as a, a um, contributor uh, to have your products be licensed. Um, and the media platforms differ as some of you may experience the image repositories online. Um, that's why we'll spend a little bit of time looking at a, a Flickr um, and, and identifying where we can find the creative licensing for images so that we're making sure that we're covering ourselves entirely. Um, legally fair use uh, helps us quite a bit and you can look into fair use, out, um, just Google it and kind of get a sense for what fair use is. Um, but I don't, um, I don't think we should just lean into that really hard. We should know what we're doing. We should, we should know the, how to properly use um, and appropriately use someone else's materials what, and, and how we can use it. Um, that's the real focus of Creative Commons licensing. It really tells end users um, like us how we can use other people's materials. So we'll look at media platforms like Flickr and YouTube. YouTube is a, a mix of copyright, not copyright. I posted this without a license. You know, so it's real, real, we have to be informed consumers in that space for sure. Uh, and then open data sources. I won't go into Dataverse very much. There are some really good ones if you're into data science um, and digging around. That that space is a little bit different. Um, licensing of, of data is a whole different thing. Um, there's a couple, and um, same with software. So I won't speak much to that. So we're gonna stay in the space of educational materials, videos, um, writing, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, oh, and then I apologize, scholarly. I did this presentation at DU last time, so I forgot to remove that. I would replace the scholarly component with having conversations with your chair and um, individuals at the Colorado Community College online about um, the tools that we have available to us, um, or an OER committee member at Front Range, um, like myself, um, uh, just as a further conversation. Molly Thompson, librarians um, are your partner in all of this. I, I would have them evaluate your work, you know, kind of, and, and just check that everything you're doing is right. Um, and you'll see that as a theme. I think it's really valuable just to double check um, this space so that we don't get cease and desist letters or, or things of that nature um, as we remix or reuse other people's creative thought or imaging or, or text or slides, uh, things like that. So first um, up is kind of exploring some open repositories. Uh, the intention for you is to kind of just know where and how to navigate these websites um, in relation to where they post the Creative Commons or the license types for videos, images, um, and things like that. So I'll have you, um, I'll show you, I'll, we'll do it hands-on. I'll show you a little bit. I have some videos um, and then I will have you um, kind of search out and kind of report back. So this is one of the little bit of, of group work and active learning that we'll do in this session um, is reporting back and sharing out. So um, feel free to follow along on your PC, open up a window and kind of, and then ask questions as we move through. Um, so first up is Flickr. Flickr is an online photo management and sharing application. Um, I, have, I have kind of moved on to Pexels I like P-E-X-E-L-S dot uh, com or dot org these days, but Flickr is still a great source um, and they you can find um, their licensing fairly easy. Let me, I'm gonna stop my share and turn on the sound so you can hear the video I'm gonna play for you. Do, do, do. I need to click that button. All right, so now we're back. Let's open up this link. There's cat themes to these videos. Um, kitten themes, I should say. Oh, and there's no sound. I didn't need to share my, I forgot about that. So this is the Flickr website. Um, let me start this over again. You'll land here. Um, it may have changed visually a little bit since I last updated um, this slide deck, but uh, flickr.com. Um, you'll land here, you'll search, it'll kind of step us through. Uh, we're gonna search for kittens because we're doing something about kittens in relation to our teaching. Get some great cat photos. Uh, and then the great part about Flickr is that their um, advanced search um, features are right on their, on their search page. So you change that to all Creative Commons um, and then 
select your cat photo. So go ahead and navigate to Flickr. Oh, and then um, let me move faces here and pause this for a moment. The license specifically can be found uh, down in the corner below um, the image. So down here, you'll see, you'll begin to see some of the, the circular Creative Commons um, uh, icons. And we'll discuss those in, um, in depth uh, right after this, after we move through some of these repositories. But look for this, um, and this gives us a bit of, of information here. Um, we can right click uh, or look up this image on Creative Commons. Flickr does a great job of linking us to Creative Commons, and then it explains how we can use or how we, we can't use essentially that um, that uh, image. Uh, and for the most part, Creative Commons, uh, there's very few licenses where we can't redistribute it. The most restrictive form is um, you can't modify, you can't change, you can't make money on it, uh, that sort of thing. So, but when we see a combination of icons, it's pretty almost guaranteed that any CC license um, is free to redistribute. Um, and to a degree of restrictions of what we can do with it um, is another thing. But most create all pretty much all of the Creative Commons licenses um, provide us that space, that fifth R of the five R's of permissions uh, to redistribute. Um, so let's go back to the slides. Any questions about Flickr at all or anything like that? Any question as you're diving in? I'll keep this as active as possible if you have questions or like, oh, this doesn't look right. Um, let me know. But Flickr is a good one. Pexels is a good one. Um, Pixabay. Uh, we'll look at Creative Commons as well. Um, because Creative Commons has an, a, a wonderful Google-esque search bar um, for that hits Flickr. It kind of searches. It's a discovery tool similar to Google. It's like that master search bar that will um, search through Flickr, Pixel, Pixel Bay, um, and a bunch of other ones um, for you. Uh, it's a great res resource on the creativecommons.org website. So the next one, and this is the minefield where we have to be experts of Minesweeper, is, is YouTube um, and when and how we can use videos if we want to modify them. Um, or just reuse them or um, how we can use them. So YouTube is a mix. Um, many of you might be really familiar with where to find this information. Uh, I feel like I use YouTube daily, um, but uh, it's a great resource for certain types of things. And, and I love that they have provided the space for people to uh, license things and share things. Um, so first we would go to YouTube and search. Of course, we're gonna search for kittens again. And then we will look, and there's a filter um, component, again, an advanced search tool. Lots of websites have, have kind of begun to lay out their user interfaces in similar fashion. So the filter um, uh, is there. And then we would go over and find the license under Creative Commons. Let me see, I saw a chat here. Yes, <laughs> YouTube certainly does have kitten videos. Um, oh, let me jump back a little bit. So we found our video. We're selecting it from the pull down. Um, we like that one. No reason. Uh, it's just cute, so that's great. And then you scroll down um, to the show more details underneath the, um, the person's information who submitted the video. Um, and then there's a line, you'll notice that says license, Creative Commons attribute license, reuse allowed. Um, you may see that line be blank, and that's a scenario where I, I feel like we should probably not use it. Um, it's not a requirement for uh, when an individual uploads a video to YouTube to um, license it or express the type of license. Um, and, and in that case, I think our default should be um, it's copyrighted. I don't have permission to use this. Or I should email outstanding videos or, or the author and, and gain um, permission through communication and have like an email record of them saying it's okay to use. 
Um, my approach to this whole space of copyright and creative commons is um, the more pessimistic side um, that if I don't know or I can't explicitly identify, then it's probably copyright and I don't have permission and I need to get permission if I really, really, really need to use it. Um, so you'll find me leaning that way. And in the conversations about copyright licensing, you'll come across librarians and, and lawyers who run the spectrum of it, um, of being more pessimistic, more and then more opportunistic. Maybe it's a good spectrum to think about um, with, with when and how we can use things. Um, I tend to lean on the, I'm a little bit more concerned and I don't want to deal with the courts or anything like that or or deal with lawyers and sending me cease desists cease and desists so um okay so let me i'll answer but i assume if we're just providing a link to the video and not betting them yeah that wouldn't be yeah you're totally right that's pretty safe um and very contextual right uh i want to i use videos in my online course from bbc that are um that are hosted on youtube and i just link them to it um, I also embed them. I, honestly, I embed them in the page. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not modifying them. I'm not uh, changing the format. I'm not downloading it. I'm not doing it. So I think providing the link provides the, we're not doing any of those modification um, changes of, of the licensing, the media type, um, or making money on it. So if we're not doing those three, we're just providing a link, then I, you're safe, you know, um, keep doing that kind of practice. That's great. Um, I do it. Uh, there's some great TED Talks on YouTube. Those are mostly Creative Commons licensed. Most, you know, there are these subsets of TED Talks groups like the TED Talk Mile High, which is a nonprofit in Denver that um, uh, is like an affiliate of, of TED Talk. And, and all of those videos um, by, a, uh, association are uh, usually Creative Commons um, and usually like non-commercial. I, I don't, you, you need to look into the organization to see what degree of Creative Commons license um, uh, those types of videos are. But if you can't find it on the YouTube, you could always do the research into the organization that hosted it, like TED Talk California or TED Talk LA or Denver and see what they're telling their people who want to use them as a platform to share their message. Um, uh, what their rules are and that'll give you some insight so it's selected here it's shown on youtube there let me jump back to the slides here so that's youtube um and in general this is just kind of a exploratory conversation so i'm not going to dive really deeply at, at the moment into the licensing um so now since we're all educators let's look at oercommons.org um open stacks was referenced a couple of times during the um, presenter that's out of Rice University. It's one of the longest, biggest ones. There's some really great technical mathematics, biology textbooks on the OpenStax um, website. Uh, OER Commons is a little um, less big in, in um, how much material you'll find there. And the third one I would have you look for, and I can share it in the chat, is, uh, and I mentioned it verbally, but it's um, Merlot.org. Uh, Merlot, I, maybe .org, you'd have to look it up. It's a product of the California college system. And so it's pretty big, uh, pretty darn big, uh, with lots of um, great English language uh, and, and things of that nature. I teach a lot of classes up for adult ed and um, ESL and e English language acquisition. I find lots of great resources there. Um, but between those three, those are three really solid spaces. Um, the other one that I'll plug, and maybe if you've been attending things at Front Range or in the OER space, um, is the Open Textbook Library, um, hosted by the Open Educational Network, which was formerly known as the Open Textbook Network, or OTN. Um, they came to campus two years ago and did some presentations, and they are the trainers of the Open um, Education, or the uh, OER ambassadors that Spencer Ellis and the state of Colorado does um, annual trainings on. Um, I was I was an open ambassador in 2017, um, and I'm now a traveling a vir I'll say a virtual traveling tr trainer for the OEN. Um, great group, lots of good resources on their um, open textbook library website. Um, so let's examine OERcommons.org real quick uh, and kind of look around and see what we can find. Um, 
if you're in a very specific discipline, take a look at that. Let me launch this video and show you how to do this. I hope we have enough time for the poem. I think we will uh, go big screen. So the, the page might have changed. I don't think it has. This, um, if you're teaching in um, some of the concurrent programs, this website also has K-12 level open ed resources um, that could be helpful and insightful, modifiable, changeable um, to your end. Um, so great website. I've been using this source for a while um, in my work and supporting faculty as they develop OER. Um, I'm a language nerd. I didn't do kittens for this one. I did linguistics. There's nothing here for kittens, but um, I did linguistics. Uh, essential linguistics is what I found. And then right below the image, you'll note uh, the remix and share. So I can remix this and share it. Um, remix being uh, that I can, if it's a PowerPoint and I turn it into a PDF and share it um, or rehost it somewhere, that would be acceptable. Um, so long as I'm, I am attributing, right? All, all CC, um, except for things that are in the public domain um, are needed to, you need to attribute it, um, what you used of the original to the original owner um, or creator. Uh, so um, making sure to note somewhere in the document or um, that, that you're remixing so-and-so's product um, under this license prior. Uh, so this site, you know, by nature, it's an OER site. They make it front up right in your face that it, you can remix and share um, this. Uh, so take a look at this one, um, dig through your license, and then they've got images and a little bit more. Um, so we know, oh, and this is a good example here. So this is a CC by, um, so we have to attribute, and then it's share alike. And share alike is a little tricky, and we'll talk about it more just in a moment. But share alike is I am going to license it, and I'm going to share alike in license so that others can use this product. And I, I love that idea because it's you it's like um, paying it forward. Uh, you know, you're you're saying if you're going to use this, I want you to share it and make it modifiable or use the same license type. Um, uh, so I always I always think of that as like paying it forward. Um, everybody's got to use it. when you use it. You have to share it in similar fashion so that the next person can do what they need to do with it. It's a great license type, though. It's also not digging too deep. It's also kind of a tricky license when you're starting to if you're trying to remix many different things that are licensed different ways. Um, that's where it gets tricky, and that's when you call your librarian uh, and really make sure that they're that you're doing things right especially if you're going to place it, your and your product, your version, somewhere that is um, openly accessible to the public, uh, for sure. All right, let me, question in chat. Yes, yeah, we're gonna jump into that right now. Great question, thank you, Mary. Uh, we're gonna dive right into uh, those types of, what are licenses? The, now that we know where to find these images, this, these license types, um, what does it mean for us? as educators who want to use the best, most efficient. Um, let me go back to the slide. Uh, set of, of readings, instructional materials in whatever format those look like. Um, oh, and let me show you real quickly. I'll just dive into this one. CC Commons, I mentioned it before. It's a wonderful um, tool. Uh, and I don't have a video for you because it's just very simple and it's it's hosted by Creative Commons, but it's like a, a map, it's like a, I mentioned it before, it's a discovery tool like Google search bar um, that searches multiple repositories that are all openly licensed. Um, you still need to do the back work of like what degree I can modify and use, but um, I send faculty to CC Commons all the time saying, hey, this is a great um, image repository uh, they used to have an old version. Um, that's what this image on the slide is. You can't find this anymore. I really wish you could because it it's, didn't search just images. It searched um, videos and uh, music. Um, these music operates can operate in this type of license as well. Um, not all types of media can be um, copyrighted. There are software is a different set of um, copyright and not even copyright, but it's a different type of licensing, essentially. Um, music can operate underneath Creative Commons and copyright, though. Um, so CC Commons is kind of like my, my go-to, my secret. 
uh, I save that one. Um, so let's go back to the slides and start from here. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Creative Commons and the license we're seeing. Um, the makeup of each Creative Commons license consists of three layers. The legal code is the base layer. So in that first Flickr example, I showed going to Creative Commons where it had that long page of everything. A lot of that is legal legalese, as I'll put it. Um, and that's uh, what's defendable in court. Um, and Creative Commons has been held up in US courts uh, in the US legal court system and internationally. There, um, I don't know of any cases where Creative Commons licenses were not held up in court as a form of copyright and intellectual property. Um, they have been um, national in the US and internationally, it has been um, held as, a, as a, an actual legal defendable law. Um, so there's legal code, then there's common deeds. Um, these are human, human readable terms. These are the icons uh, and the language used. Um, and then the final one is the machine readable version of the license. Um, the code, the HTML underneath the image. So when you want to license things, you would go to creativecommons.com. You would tell it, uh, there's a there's a link at the top that says like, I want to license my work. Um, and you just tell it what you want, uh, what types of permissions you want people to do with, to be able to do with your work. And then um, from there, it produces, it generates that little image that we saw um, of, the, of the combo of icons. Um, and it provides a embed code with HTML and an image. So if you're working with like a PDF, you can grab the image and place it somewhere and then maybe have a, a link. Um, uh, so that website produces those, those com very common structures and images we're seeing of Creative Commons licenses. Um, so there are types of creative works that CC can be used on, videos, articles, books, presentations, audio sets, to a, to a limit data sets, offline documents, um, text on websites, your blogs, um, course modules and online courses. Um, definitely don't use it on software. Um, there's a couple of different license types there, copyleft and that kind of thing. I'm not an expert on any of those, but copyright does not function on software. Um, and then the types of rights afforded in CC to the creator is the moral right at the front and center. You need to, uh, you, I have ownership of this. This is my intellectual creative thought work. Um, so you need to attribute this. Um, you can, at the same time, there are licenses that would provide you with the ability to publish anonymously. So um, uh, not to give your name, but still to, to say that people need to attribute this to like the original source. So, um, and then the integrity of the work. Uh, so say your video is, you think your video is perfect and it can't get any better. Doesn't PDF, no, you know, this form that, no, um, or keeping the license type um, integrity as well. So the, the I think of integrity of the work as the media and um, uh, the, the actual content. If you, you can, there's license types where it's, you say it's not remixable and that means don't change my wording if it's a written document or something to that effect. Uh, so it, it, integrity of work is, is kind of a catch-all for the media, the content, and the license type. Keep the integrity of, the, of your work in those forms. Um, and what CC is not is patents, trademarks, privacy, and public rights. Um, those are different spaces of, 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 of law. So um, now let's get into the symbols we're seeing, the different license elements and their meanings. Um, the first one, this symbol means attributed by, you'll see this on everything but um, public domain um, and the anonymous one. All of them, all the other ones have attribute by. So that is your moral rights at front and center is what Creative Commons is about. Uh, then the next one is non-commercial. Uh, your reuse, uh, our end user use of, of the work is cannot be sold for money. Um, you see this, you'll see this on OER Commons, OpenStax. It's a majority of uh, the, the open textbook library. You'll see it there a lot because they don't want you to make money. The whole idea is to further, um, to, to provide an open educational textbook and not have a, to shift that away from making money and into um, 
education as like a universal right and helping our students and, and pulling that financial barrier away. Um, share alike, which means that uh, the new ad adaptation, your new versions um, need to be licensed under the same license. So if it's attribute, attribute by and um, non-commercial, yours and then share alike, you also need to do attribute by non-commercial share alike. Um, that one's the trickiest one. The share alike makes certain types of products that have been licensed differently, not so friendly. Um, and I would talk to a librarian about how to use those and navigate those scenarios so that you're not um, redistributing and sharing a version that um, uh, breaks this. And then the final one is no derivatives. And this is where you can um, keep the integrity of your work in the content and the media. So if it's a video and you don't want people to um, change the, the language or the move it to a PDF or a Word document or download it or something like that, um, that's the one to do. Uh, and you'll see that quite often on maybe more commercial or company products, uh, organizational products that are, um, and, and less so on um, like ac academic sourced kind of products, like me creating a textbook as an adjunct faculty. Um, you don't usually see no derivatives on those. So then we see combos of all those images we just saw. Um, and these are the different degrees. Since for chapters in CD equal sign, maybe just don't use. Yeah, or, you know, um, if it's for the sake of your class, maybe give them very directed instructions on how to use that chapter. Read the executive summary. Go to the conclusion read the executive summary and conclusion, or you know, maybe put the, um, the onus on your students and, how, and what they're reading. Um, I, in my classes, explain, um, but I'm using other pictures. Oh, ooh, yeah, librarians are your number one partner on all of this as you kind of navigate that space of like, what image, can I use this image with that? Um, and my default, the pessimistic view is, don't do it until you have, you know, Molly's approval, or not approval, but um, some reviews by uh, Creative Commons licensed individuals. Um, I've gone through the Creative Commons certificate program. Uh, I'm just finishing it up, actually. Um, and I'm still kind of like, mm, I don't want to end up in court. So, mm, I don't, you know, and I, nor do I want to provide someone with my opinion that is not super accurate. So I would go with her, um, get some insights from other people, too. So this kind of is a, de a degree of restrictiveness, the top being the most um, open for end users to use. So if you see a CC BY, you can redistribute, you can remix, you can um, and share. And, and so you have a lot more ability and flexibility in your modification and your reuse. Um, then we have the CC BY share alike. We have to share with the same uh, license type, but we can still remix. So we could take that video and turn it into a PDF and then place this same license on it. That would be acceptable. Um, maybe just images, you know, your PDF is just like a set of images or the, um, the captioning, you copy the captioning into it, you share a like and you attribute to the video. That would be acceptable. Um, and then CC by NC, uh, non-commercial, that's restrictive because we can't sell it. Um, it's a little bit more restrictive in that fashion. Um, and then there is the CC by non-commercial share alike. As you can, we're starting to move, we're reducing those R's, those five R. We can't really remix it. We can't sell it. Um, we, can we can redistribute it though. I can share it with my class um, and that's, that's totally okay. I can pull it into my D2L shell and feel comfortable doing so um, and not too concerned. And then there is the CC by no derivatives, um, allows people uh, to use, this one is a little bit more restrictive, um, uh, but I would probably put these, I would almost say this one's a little more restrictive. Um, so no derivatives, we can't make new versions. And we just simply, if it's a YouTube video, we just link our students to it. Um, and that would work out fine. Don't download it. Don't host it somewhere new. Um, don't add an intro and an outro because it's just to make it nicer, or cleaner or something. If you've got some video editing abilities, don't edit it, just use the link. Um, and for our sake of instructors, just preface that. Um, let your students know like, this is the video, go to X part of the video. I don't wanna pull a clip out of it um, 
I just want you to view this five point five minutes, ten seconds in to seven minutes and thirty two seconds in. Um, so we can kind of you know have our students be informed consumers and us as well. Um, and then this final one is the most restrictive, and it's simply just we can redistribute. Um, you will see these on OER websites. Um, this is a very common one um, uh, with uh, when adjuncts produce. You'll see a lot of these um, the, for the people who don't care and are very about open to the open. Uh, their main driver is like furthering the public good. You'll see a lot more of the, the top one, um, but you'll see a lot of the bottom one um, down below as well. So now let's go to the next slide. So as we begin to plan for Creative Commons licensing or reusing or remixing, um, I think I've answered a lot of questions of using the links. Um, that's a good use if we plan to use Creative Commons, kind of negotiating those, those degrees of, of licensing and that use. Um, if you plan to uh, license some original work, um, make sure your work is copyrightable, um, that you have all of the, uh, uh, permissions. So, uh, Lori, a great example of like the images versus the materials. Make sure you got it. That was where my mind went. Is like, ooh, I would want to. I would want to like almost create an Excel sheet of all of my source images and licensing and just take a look. But that's me. That's totally me. And you can also come to the same conclusion by working with a librarian um, at Front Range and just getting another pair of eyes that is informed on that work. Um, I like I said, I tend to lean into more of like, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I'm a rule follower. Uh, so make sure you have the rights, make sure you understand how Creative Commons licenses operate. Those all kind of echo that same sentiment. Um, be specific about what you are licensing. So going back to your question of like, am I licensing the image or am I licensing the content? Am I licensing the document? Um, or am I licensing everything in it? Um, is those all kind of have some considerations these types of considerations. And um, the last one, are you a member of a society? Uh, that one um, can be tricky when you're asked to produce something for somebody or as part of an effort with a society or an association. Um, they often can lay claim to some level of intellectual you know, ownership. Um, so just being mindful of that um, and just doing your due diligence uh, and checking out everything out. So that's kind of, that, I could have probably summarized that and just do your due diligence, make sure you've got the rights on every little bit and part and piece. Um, when you come from my perspective of like, mm, I should be a little bit more concerned. Um, then remixing considerations, make sure the original is licensed for remix um, and you're using it appropriately. Check those licenses for the images, the content. Does the original license require sharing and um, know who to credit? So I often, um, uh, the poem activity, let me check time. Ooh, we're getting down there. Let's shift right over to it. Um, darn, I really hope we have enough time to do the poet, poem. But uh, know who to credit. So keep a, a running list if you're citing a bunch of different places. Um, Creative Commons has this great, great framework called TASSEL. Um, and this is something that uh, would is, when we are collecting like a bibliography, our students are doing it, um, but uh, citations and different forms of citations are essentially like these records um, that we're keeping of where the thought work that we're now gathering and then you know, synthesizing in our, our essays or articles or publications or student work is doing. Creative Commons has this very simple framework. I think of like Turabian and APA as these incredibly elaborate, ever-changing beasts of record. Uh, but TASSEL is a very simple format. Um, so as you are maybe creating a, a textbook and you're pulling in and remixing materials into a new one that you plan to redist redistribute or host on a, um, a down the road, down on one of these um, open textbook uh, repositories, TASSEL is at the very basis of the simplest form, right? We're, the title of the work that we're remixing, the author, the source, the license. And then I added the date, um, uh, though, you know, um, some types of citations are changing quickly uh, and dropping like date of access and that kind of thing. Um, and then getting your license from the creativecommons.org is a good place. So now with a little bit of time here, um, I'm gonna share the links with you. We've got about 10 minutes, I hope. Please ask questions during this if you don't want to um, practice with us. I'm gonna share 
get out of this real quick. I'm going to share a link um, to the Google Doc in the chat. Oh, well. Yeah, keep do your due diligence on the chapter work and making sure everything is good to go. Um, have an author, you know, there's the we're, we're we, you can often look at to the pub, the actual publishing process and what the publishers do and their process to working with an author, gathering materials and kind of think about, am I doing all of those checks in my work as well um, to help you guide through it? Because uh, we should be, you know, it's it's a shift. We're not using publishers anymore, but we still need to do those editing checks and is the language right and um, do we have licensing to that? Um, so I often look at publishing practices and, and processes uh, and you in, inform that with in my conversations with faculty as they're developing OER. Um, it's a good framework to think about. Uh, so in that is a document. We're going to create a funny poem in that maybe none of our lines are the same. Uh, let's go to the, the page I shared. So the Google Doc looks like this. Hop in here. Um, grab like a single line for the sake of time and pull it into the box here and then um, provide as much tassel as you can. We're short on time, so maybe just some lines. But this is more or less like what I'm doing when I'm working with these groups um, and, and, and developing my own work. I'm working on one myself for the TESOL program um, just because I don't want to. Uh, I've dropped my two textbooks. Um, but I still find that I'm, uh, I, I would like to pull it all together into one object for my students and not have them always trying to navigate different websites and stuff. So take a look at these two sources. These are these um, websites, CC Mixter is a good one for music that's openly licensed um, and uh, poetry. And then AvoVision is a um, similar, it's, it's kind of this poetry. Both of the links here um, will take you to some examples that are pretty open to use, so we'd be safe. But check the license as part of this. Um, and pull, let's pull in some pros, and then we'll have one of you read it. Uh, so this is the risk taking, low risk taking practice portion of the workshop. Sorry, I talked a little bit too much there. And I'll pull one in as well. That's nice and uplifting. There we go. That's a good one. All right, how's everybody doing? Pretty good, not too shabby, all right. I see, let's see, got three components in here. Give it an extra minute or two if anyone else wants to jump in. But it's not necessary. I hope everything was clear and it made sense. I know we moved kind of quickly through some. I would, uh, if this is a space you're working in, continue to do these sessions. 
um, look into Creative Commons. Has, the certificate program I mentioned before, in the very nature of Creative Commons, has openly licensed their content. So uh, if you ask Kay Novak, um, I, last year I uploaded the, the entire certificate program into a D2L shell. Um, if you ask Kay, she can give you access. Um, otherwise, I think you could pull it yourself as well from their website. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's really is a college course that they put you through. So it's a lot of great resources and it gets into the really fine details of everything that we've covered in general as we get reached this point of low stakes practice here. But, oh great, we've got, it's gonna be a long one. This is gonna be a wild one. Oh, and if you wanted to write your own, you could have written your own and then titled it what you wanted and placed yourself as author and then chosen your license. That would have been a different direction we could have gone with this. This type of document, I, I, Laura, it is something I track when I do the work. I, it's very simple. It's just a two, um, two column table with the tassel framework. Um, and it's something I, I, you could use to track yourself through the work. The problem is we already did 19 chapters where it started with an OpenStax and now we've edited it. So oh, it's yeah. figuring out which ones weren't already tracked by OpenStax. That's gotcha. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think um, another, uh, a couple of years ago, I went to the um, uh, Teaching Professors Conference, which is a large national association for um, professors in a higher ed who are teacher teaching focused. And I presented on the idea of, um, the, of Creative Commons and this work and the work you're doing, Laura. And, you know, it's, it has great impact, as we heard, of to students, um, minority, majority students, just dropping that cost. Um, and, but at the same time, for us as producers of this, it's a fun way to re-engage with our discipline if we've been teaching. Um, it's a way to, to peruse the new article. You know, it's a good solid reason to kind of like re-engage with the scholarly communication that has occurred over the recent years or changes, updates, new themes, um, and really kind of refine our own thinking of, of the fields we're in. Um, I, I consider myself lifelong learner. Um, my understandings are never fully complete, um, especially as there's more and more people in this world. I need to just understand perspective uh, of these topics and how, um, what that changes and meanings of our work and stuff. Uh, um, so it's, I, I feel like this is just a great space for us to, to continue our work in our field as teaching professionals, um, and, and remain relevant and keep up to date on things. Um, and then at, at the same time, it's a good space to, uh, refine our own thinking and share and, and share in our, the scholarly communication of our, our disciplines in our fields. Um, it's just, a, I think uh, for, we have a lot to gain from doing this type of work uh, in this space. Um, not just the student cell or the financial dollar cell or, or any of those. I think that's a great argument and something um, to, be, to be mentioned. So with the last minute here, can I ask uh, quickly about actually posting once licensed? Sure, yeah, we didn't get into hosting. I apologize about that. I wanted to briefly cover that, but let me read this out. And if you stick around for an extra minute, um, if we don't get kicked out, uh, I can share a little bit more about that. But let's go ahead and read this. Would anybody want to try or should I just do this really quickly? Um, I'll read our shared poem, our shared brilliance based in Felix Jung and Avo Vision. Um, so the turning turns, the burning burns. Until we die, we breathe. The path is clear in front of you, dear, even when you don't know the way. Asleep, halfway home. On breaking water's surface felt raindrops. In China, we would tie a length of string to dragonflies. And amateur astronomers fear an approved prison project would spoil their view because the prison's lights would stay on all night. Ahead, I see a wide expanse of nothingness half clouded by the drifts. Each year I look back and try to identify the best 10 days there were plenty of days to cherish and be thankful for. It's like a Bob Dylan song. Excellent. Everybody, round of applause to everybody there. Felt like a 
master poet. I felt like someone should have been playing the guitar maybe next time. Uh, but that was excellent. I really, it's ended on a really good note. I've done with these with graduate students. I've done this workshop with, and that was a little bit more wild. Uh, they, you know, we weren't in pandemic times. I don't think there was like a shared kind of experience occurring except for graduate student being graduate student, but um, really appreciate you willing to choose and select and share there. Um, I apologize for reading into the meaning of your selections, but uh, it felt powerful. We should share this further. Um, great. So that's the end. I wanted to provide a practice space for you all. We've, you've been listening to sessions today. You might listen to some more sessions on Creative Commons on, on this topic. Um, and a lot of it is always just like talkathons. And I, this was really a focus of let's do it together and talk through it. Um, please feel free to email me um, at nicholas.parez at frontrange.edu if you have any further questions or want me to connect you with someone on the other than myself on the OER committee um, or, or someone else who may be a little bit more pointed help for your 19 chapter future publication or something to that effect. Um, so let me jump back into the slides and make sure the chat is good. I apologize for two minutes over. Yeah, go ahead and feel like if you need to go to the next session, I'm sure our session will just close. Great to see you, Kathleen. Take care of yourself. Be well. Happy New Year. Um, places to host um, are, uh, there's some really ups and downs. Um, the column on the left of here, I'll show you this. I'll just leave you with this. These are um, librarian information science informed kind of uh, things that we think about when we're looking to produce uh, knowledge in various more formats or media. So um, we need to think about findability, the audience, um, creative content, what's in it, scholarly content, are we referencing um, foundational articles? Um, how, what kind of permissions and things do we have on there? Um, wh where is that hidden? Is, I say hidden, but I mean paywalls and journals um, and things of that nature. Um, archiving, how long do I want it to last? And um, uh, how long, it's a more, think of it as preservation of an item. Um, how long will that, that item last? How long do I intend it to last? Um, and then legality, um, and that's kind of the Creative Commons um, space, uh, and also to an extent, how, how often are materials checked in these repositories for like violations and that sort of thing. So if one bit you leave from here is think about findability, where do I want people to find it? How accessible is it? Will it show up on Google search or will it be sitting on um, the, the CC online's repository? I forget the name of it at the moment. Um, creative content, where is that coming from? What type of content and media and where that might sit? You know, a book doesn't sit on YouTube a book would sit in um, OpenStax or OTL. Um, scholarly content, talked about that. Archiving, conversation of preservation. Um, so these are considerations as you kind of vet like where best to host content. Um, librarians, this is all themed from library and information sites. So Molly Smith or Drew Bagby would be excellent contacts on, on, contacts on this subject matter of where it bet would best sit. Um, and then also maybe an additional conversation with like Kay Novak or someone on the instructional design, Stephanie Wickman, um, to connect with one of them uh, and how your product might fit into an online course, if that's your intention, or D2L or something like that. I think that would be secondary to the conversation with the librarian themed in findability, creative content, scholarly, these topics. So I hope this was helpful. I hope everybody... Um, I will share this PowerPoint with uh, Molly Smith. So if, if they're sharing PowerPoints, they'll, you'll get this um, down the road. But thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and have a good rest of your day, a good rest of the conference. So, sorry for taking too much time. <laughs> Four minutes over.